article, an expression that has this symbol. I know some of this is review, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But a radical is a symbol that is a, an expression that has your radical symbol. And I got to zero out here. Okay. Let's figure out, let's see if I can get, uh, here we go. Okay. Um, examples, you know, you can have the square root of 25. You can have the fifth. If it's the fifth root, then the five is there. Um, you can also have something like the one-third root, um, the third root of eight. But for our purposes, for the most part, the square root is written without the number two, and it's just the radical sign, and it's the square root. Okay, the radicand is the numbers underneath the radical sign. Okay, so this is just some verbiage um, and some vocabulary that you need to be familiar with. But the square root of a number is the value that when multiplied by itself gives you the number. And we should be very comfortable with that unless it's a perfect square. And a perfect square is always going to be one where you have a whole number. Okay, 6 times 6, or you could have, or negative 6 times negative 6, okay? So it's plus or minus 6. And we've learned that now doing um, those, um, the, what we did over the weekend, that when you pull something out of the square root, you really have plus or minus, because it could be either one. If it's a perfect square, that means you're getting a whole number as your answer, okay? Factor the radicand, group two alike, take out the square, multiply inside and outside. And we're going to go that. And this is, we are going to use prime factorization, okay? And I gave you a prime numbers chart just to kind of, because um, sometimes it's easier to kind of get familiar with what are prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers you want to factor this down to a prime number where you will not be able to do any, there are no more factors besides a prime number is where there's only factors of one and itself, okay? So like the number 113, there is nothing that goes into 113 evenly, so it's called a prime number. Only 1 times 113 will get you 113. That's obvious to see. Okay. Well, it's, it's, just, it's just very, you know, um, out there. It's a good idea to know. It says on the second page, your perfect square is from 1 to 25. Um, basically, um, I'm not going to sit here and do these. Um, but um, I believe 25 times 25 is 625. Is that what it is? 25 squared and um, let's see, 25 squared, 25 squared is 625. Yes, and I know most of them, but not all of them, and it's only because I've had to use them so much. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and fill this sucker out. What they're saying is n is 1, so n squared, 1 squared is 1. 2 is n, 2 squared is 4. Okay, that's great. We could sit here and spend waste our time filling this out, but we're not going to. All right, find the value of each of the following. So, what is the value of the square root of 25? You all should know this. Five. Well, it's actually now we're going to look at it as plus or minus 5. Okay. How about the square root of 169? You have a calculator. Plus or minus 13. And it is plus or minus 13. Okay. So, how about this one? What do you get? Negative 21. Now, what if I was to tell you this? I would take my negative sign on the outside. If I just was looking at the square root of 441, I would be doing negative plus or minus, right? 
21, which actually equals a negative and a positive would give you a negative 21, and a negative and a negative makes it positive, but that's okay. We're going to call it negative 21, okay? All right, so now we've got 2 times the square root of 144. So we would rewrite this as 2 times plus or minus 12, which is equal to plus or minus 24. Okay? Negative 1 over 64. Well, the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 64 is, you can, and it's easier to look at this, especially as you get more complicated numbers, like this, okay? So if you look at it like that, then you have what? Negative 1 over 8, okay? How about the next one? I'm still saying it's easier to do this. 169 over the square root of 225. Okay, and you have 15. plus or minus 13 over 15. Okay. This is not the third root. This is three times. So you have three times the square root of 361 over the square root of 576 which is equal to 3 times plus or minus 19 over 24, which is equal to, now, look at it this way, 3 over 1 times plus or minus 19. I can break 24 down into what? 3 times 8, right? So then my 3s cancel each other out. Do you see how that works? Or you could just say 3 goes into 24 8 times, and you would have 8 on the bottom. Either way, but um, this would give me plus or minus 19 over 8. Because you could sit there and do 3 times 19, and then you would have it over 24, then you'd have to simplify it, okay? All right, negative 4 times the square root... Uh, 484, which is equal to negative 4 times plus or minus 22, which is equal to negative 4 plus. Because if I take a negative out here, I'm really saying, and I should have broken down these up here, but and I will, I'll go back and do that. Uh, plus or minus... 88. Because if I have negative 4 times a positive 22, what am I ending up with? A negative 88. If I have negative 4 times a negative 22, what am I ending up with? Okay, so when I did this up here, I probably should have done this. This is like saying negative 1 times. Now does that change our answer? So now over here, I really have negative 1 plus or minus. So then I really do end up with plus or minus 1 8, don't I? Make sense? Okay. Same thing happened up here. Just didn't describe it very good, so I should have ended up with plus or minus. My bad. Not everything is perfect, though. These were perfect squares. They all come out... They come out perfectly. They're beautiful. So sometimes when something isn't perfect, we have to use something called prime factorization. When you find the square root of a number that is not a perfect square, you have... How did I cut that off? My goodness. Look at me. See... Yeah, right.
irrational. That's correct. Just want to make sure I had the word right, okay? An irrational square root. Irrational square roots can be simplified, comma, most of the time. Okay? And we will simplify them using prime factorization, which you learned in sixth grade, but don't probably remember it. Okay? Prime factorization. Why am I missing a page? Oh, I see why, because when I flipped it, I missed this page. Okay, here we go. The square root of 92. All right, so if I take 92 over here, okay, let's think about, all right, can I divide 92 by 1? Yes, but I just get 92. So let's start with 2. 2 goes into 92 how many times? Put in your calculator. 92 divided by 2. What do you get? Okay, so 2 goes into 92 and leaves me 46. 2 goes into 46 how many times? Two goes into 46 23 times. Is 23 prime? Yes. Okay. 23 is prime. So that's as far down as you can get this. So how we can do this is we have a pair of twos, don't we? Okay. So we can take that pair of twos out of this. All right. And how I'm going to show you this is I can do the square root of 2 times 2 times the square root of 23. Well, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 23, isn't it? So now when I take that out, I end up with plus or minus 2 times the square root of 23. And that's the farthest down I can simplify that. I can pull a 2. A pair of twos gives me one two when I pull it out of a square root. Does that make sense to you? Yes or no? Okay. All right. Let's try another one. Square root of 24. So I'm just going to start with two. Two goes into 24, 12 times. Two goes into 12, six times. Two goes into six, how many times? Three. Three. I have one pair of twos, don't I? So the square root of 2 times 2 times what's left over? 2 times 3, isn't it? Okay. So now I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. Or I have pulled my 2 out of here. I have plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6. And that's as low as, and that is the farthest I can simplify that irrational radical. Okay? Alrighty. Let's try something harder. 247. What will go into 247? Oh, it's going to take us a while to figure it out. Let's do it. 247 divided by 2. Does it work? Nope. 247 divided by 3. Does it work? Nope. 247 divided by 4. Does it work? Nope. 247 divided by 5. Does it work? Nope. 247 divided by 6. Does it work? 247 divided by 7. Nope. I'm about ready to give up. How about you? I'm not giving up yet, though. 247 divided by... 9. 247. I know 10 is not going to go into it because it doesn't end. It's 13. And how many times will 13 go into 247? 19 times. Guess what? 13 and 19 are both what? Prime. So what is 247? 
it's not prime, but I can't break it down to anything that will help me out here because if I do the square root of 13 times 19, does I can't pull anything out of there. Does that make any sense to you? So this is really just the square root of 247. It's as far as I can go. I can't really, unless I want an irrational number, there's nothing I can do. Okay? All right, so here we go. 136. Start with your 2. And what do we get? 68. 2 goes into 68, doesn't it? How many times? 34. Oh, 2 will go into that how many times? So now I'm at a prime. 17 is prime. It's as far as I can go. In other words, you're trying to break this down until you get to a prime. I have one pair of 2s, don't I? Okay, so I can do the square root of 2 times 2 times the square root of 2 times 17. I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 34. And now I can do plus or minus 2 times the square root of 34 as my answer. That's the farthest I can break that down. Okay. Number 13, 63. So let's try 63. What can I do to 63? 2 won't go into it. Will 3 go into it? Three goes into it 21 times. Oh, three will go into 21 too, won't it? Seven times. Now am I at a prime number? Okay, so I've got a pair of threes. All right, I can pull one three out of there. And you can continue to write this out as square root of three times three times the square root of 7, then you have the square root of 9 times the square root of 7, and you would know that that is plus or minus 3 times the square root of 7. I'm sorry, plus or minus, what am I doing with that, huh? All right, anyways, or if I know I can pull 1, 3 out, I can put my 3 here, plus or minus, and what does that leave me? Whatever I can't pull. If I pull, if I have a pair, I can pull one out. Does that make sense? Because 3 times 3 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I could go directly to here if I know what I'm doing. If you don't, then do it the old-fashioned way. 14, 98. All right, 9. Let's do 2. 2 goes into there what? 49 times. Ooh, 49. Is 49, a pro is 49 a perfect square? It's 7 and 7, isn't it? So now I'm not going to be able to pull my 2 out, but I could pull 1, 7 out. Do you agree? So if I pull out 1, 7, I have plus or minus 7 times the square root of what? No. Nope. What's left? I've taken care of all that, okay? So I could write it as the square root of 7 times 7 times 2. There's another way to do it. I know that I can pull one of these out. So if I can pull one of those out, it only leaves 2 left. Because 7 times 7 times 2 is 98. All right? Make sense? All right, 256. All right, we're going to get a little bit complicated here. 256, we're going to do this the long way. Divided by 2 is what? 128. Divided by 2 is what? 64. Divided by 2 is what? 32. Divided by 2 is what? 16. Divided by 2 is what? Ooh, I can continue. Divided by 2 is what? 4. Ooh, divided by 4 is what? 2 and 2. 
Now, some of you might have noticed that 256 is the square of 16. Okay? But if you didn't know that off the top of your head, I have one pair, so I can pull a 2 here. I have one pair, so I can pull a 2 here. I have one pair, so I can pull a 2 here, right? And I have another pair, so I can pull a 2 here. So really, I have plus or minus 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is what? 4. 4 times 2 is what? What? 8. 8. 8 times 2 is? So my answer is plus or minus 16. And if you had gone here and done second square root 256, you would... Oh, what am I doing? Second square root 256, you would have known that the square root is 16. Okay? All right, here we go. We're going to add something to the mix. Whenever I have this, I run myself a worksheet down here, and I say two times so I won't forget, okay? Then I come over here, and I go 48, and I say, okay, two will go into that, 24. Two will go into that, 12. Two will go into that, 6. Two will go into that, and I've got a 3. Then I'm going to take my pairs. I got one pair. So I'm going to put in my two here. Then I've got another pair. And I'm going to put in my two here. And then I'm left with this that I can't pull out of the root. So I'm going to put times the square root of three. Now it's just a matter of doing my math. I know it's always going to be a plus or minus situation, so I put that there. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And it's going to be 8 times the square root of 3. Eight times the square root of 3. Doesn't give me what I want to see, huh? Why is that? You see that? Because remember, these are irrational numbers. It's amazing. All right, ready for another one? All right, down here, I've got what? Five times, because I want to start out with my five, because I don't want to forget about it. 72. Two goes into 72 how many times? What? 36, and 2 goes into 36, 18, and 2 goes into 18, 9, and two, ooh, 3 goes into 9, 3. So, I have a pair of 2s, so I can bring that 2 here. Those are done. I have a pair of 3s, so I can bring that 3 here. And what am I left underneath? The 2 times the square root. Of 2. So plus minus 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times 3 is 30 times the square root of 2. Two sixteen. Why don't you try it? See if you come up with the same as me.
guys good? Yeah? Okay, we're going to rewrite these on the back because they're long. Okay? Number 19 is negative 3 times the square root of 192. Do you guys even want me to do these? Yes or no? You want me to do the 25, 20? Okay. 20. 25, 20. The square root of 25, 20. So I start out 25, 20 um, with 5. Why would I start out with 5? Because I know 5 is going to go into a 0, right? Okay, and the bigger number I can start with, the better off I am. Five, because then I don't have as many to do. And I know that that'll go 504 times. Then I got a four at the end, so I'm going to do it by two. How come they do it by 20? Because 20... But then you'd have to break down your 20. You're doing it by numbers that are prime. Do you see that? You're pulling out prime numbers, aren't you? Okay. Two is prime. You can only use prime numbers when you're pulling out. So that's why we can't use 10 either. Okay. Because 10 can be broken down into 2 times 5, which are prime. All right. So we, will, we could end up with 10, but 20 can be broken down to 4, which is you would break down to 2 times 2, and you would be able to pull out a 2. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, I would do here. That's why you have your prime numbers chart, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Okay. Um, all right. So 2 is uh, 252, and 2 is 126, and 2 is 63. Now, 2 won't go into 63. Will 3 go into 63? Yes. 3 goes into 63 21 times. 3 goes into that and 7. Can't break 7 down. So now all I've got is a pair of 2's I can pull out. So I've got a 2. A pair of 3's I can pull out. So i got a pair of 3's. And then I have to leave underneath my 5 my 2, and my 7. Okay? So 2 times 3 is 6, plus or minus 6 times the square root of 5 times 2 is 10, times 7 is 70. And no, you can't go back and do the 70. Okay? If that was a question. Might as well do the last one. We got three times. I know it's a negative, but remember, everything's going to end up with plus or minus in front of it anyways. So 192 can be divided by 2. I get 96. 2. I get 48. 2. I get 24. 2. 12. 2. 6. 2. 3. One pair of 2. Another pair of twos. Another pair of twos. And what am I left at underneath? Two. The three. The three all by itself. So I've got plus or minus. Three times two is six. Times two is twelve. Times two is twenty-four. Times the square root of three. What? Oh, I'm so sorry. My bad. Okay. 